Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to another chapter of A Court of Wings and Ruin, written by Sarah J. Moss and read by yours truly, Freewater, with the exclamation point for the added emphasis. Oh man, we are back here today, Ionte. Sorry to spoil if you didn't read the last one. May I, just because I said that word, I feel like that's spoiler enough. Please go back and listen to the other one if you need to. Or, you know, if you're not spoiled, keep going on. But Iante came back. That little son of a gun. Uh, <laughs> she's making my southern come out. <laughs> she killed the Suriel. The Suriel made it three whole books of just answering... It finally answered a question that Fyra did not know the answer to, you know? She didn't know the answer to this one, finally. The other two ones were wastes of questions, I feel like. I guess not waste. She needed to find it out, but knew the answer kind of thing. Um, I'm being a little too a little too aggressive, but it's because Yante's here. I also want um, to give a little shout out to y'all. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Chapter 56. Actually did really well at the beginning of YouTube. I'm used to it normally, my books kind of like, starting out, they get released and it takes like a couple days for everyone to maybe like catch up or some people to like come back and forth, maybe reading on their own. I totally get it. But give yourselves a pat on the back. Chapter 56 really popped out. It was a big, it was a big standout episode since chapter 55 of A Court of Mist and Fury. Obviously it still has to like, work its way up to that level of juiciness but i was thanks thanks y'all for being so uh into the series and all that fun stuff so with that let's get back into chapter 59 concealed behind the tree i took in my surroundings i was exhausted but i could winnow i could winnow and be gone the ash arrows they'd put into the Suriel, however. I met its eyes as it lay there, bleeding out on the moss. The same ash arrows that had brought down Rise. But my mates had been carefully placed to disable him. These had been aimed to kill. That mouth of two big teeth formed a silent word. Run. It took the King of Hybern days to unravel what you did to me. Oh, sorry. It took the King of Hybern days to unravel what you did to me. Yante purred, her voice drawing closer. I still can't use most of my hand. I didn't reply. Winnow. I should winnow. Black blood dribbled out of the Suriel's neck. The arrow tipped vulgar as it jutted up from its thick skin. I couldn't heal it. Not with those ash arrows still in the flesh. Not until they were out. I'd heard from Tamlin how you captured this one. Yante went on, coming closer and closer. So I adapted your methods, and it would not tell me anything. But since you have made contact so many times, the robe I gave it. I could hear the, voice smi the smile in her voice. A simple tracking spell. A gift from the king. To be triggered in your presence, if you should come calling again. Run. The surreal mouth once more, blood dribbling past its withered lips. That was pain in its eyes. Real pain as mortal as any creature. And if Iante took it alive to Hybern, the surreal knew it was a possibility. It had begged me for freedom once, yet it was willing to be taken. For me to run. Its milky eyes narrowed. In pain and understanding, yes, it seemed to say, Go. The king built shields in my mind, Yante prattled on, to keep you from harming me again when I found you. I peered around the tree to spire, standing at the edge of the clearing, frowning at the Suriel. She wore her pale robes, that blue stone crowning her head. Only two guards with her. Even after all this time, she still underestimated me. I ducked back around before she could spot me. Met the Suriel stare one more time and I let it read every one of the emotions that solidified in me with absolute clarity. The Suriel began to shake its head, or tried to. But I gave it a smile of farewell, 
stepped into the clearing. I should have slit your throat that night in the tent, I said to the priestess. One of the guards shot an arrow at me. I blocked it with a wall of hard air that instantly buckled. Drained. Mostly drained. And if it took another hit from an ash arrow. Yante's face tightened. You'll find you want to reconsider how you speak to me. I'll be your best advocate in Highburn. I suppose you'll have to catch me first, I said coolly, and ran. I could have sworn that ancient force moved to make room for me. Could have sworn it too. Read my final thoughts to the Suriel and cleared the way. But not for them. I hurled every scrap of strength into my legs, into keeping upright as I sprinted through the trees, leaping over rocks and streams, dodging moss-coated boulders. Yet those guards, yet Ionthe, managed to keep close behind. Even as they swore at the snapping trunks that seemed to shift into their way, the rocks that went loose beneath their feet, I only had to outrun them for so long. Only for a few miles. Draw them away from the Suriel, buy a time to flee, and make sure they paid for what they had done. All of it. I opened my senses, letting them lead the way. The force did the rest. Perhaps she was waiting for me. Perhaps she had ordered the woods to open a path. The highburn guards gained on me. My feet flew beneath me, swift as a deer. I began to recognize the trees, the rocks. There. I had stood with Rise. There. I had flirted with him. There. He had lounged atop a branch while waiting for me. The air behind me parted. An arrow. I veered left, nearly slamming into a tree. The arrow went wide. The light shifted ahead. Brighter. The clearing. I let out a whimper of relief that I made sure they heard. I broke from the tree line in a leap. Knees popping as I flew over the stones leading to that hair-thatched cottage. Help me. I breathed, making sure they heard that too. The wooden door was already halfway open. The world slowed and cleared with each step, each heartbeat, as I hurtled over the threshold and into the weaver's cottage. And now, my friends, as quick as it came... That's the end of chapter 59. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. I thought she was just going to try and I, I don't, I was a little curious myself. I didn't know if we were going to have a run in with the weaver again. Um, but since we were coming here, I was like, oh, maybe, you know, the weaver is going to track her down, but I didn't expect the Eonthe, the Eonthe show up and she's going to trail her down to the Weaver's Cottage. I don't even know what's going to happen next because I feel like the Weaver could just kill them all. The Weaver could be like, oh yeah, thanks for bringing these people here for me to kill. And also, by the way, I'm going to kill you too. Hopefully, uh, whatever happens, Fyra can make it out. I really want her to get back to that Suriel. Um, it's helped her a lot in the past, I feel like, even though, you know, again, uh, it's... <laughs> It helped her out a lot in the past, and it's been in all the books. Come on, let the Suriel live, bro. Let the Suriel live. <laughs> I'm just looking through some of the other pages, looking at the map to kind of, like, gauge. I, I, like, I kind of know where we're at with this. We're on, like, the Middle East coast of Prithian. And the crazy part is, like, it's not that far away from... Where are the battles going on? I, I guess it's far away in a general sense, but they were talking about the Winter Court, like north of the Winter Court area, so where Under the Mountain is. So we're pretty close to the battle anyway. Well, y'all, that's another chapter down, and we'll be back, so make sure to stay beautiful, stay hydrated, and we'll see you in the next chapter.